and we just put the government as uh, the target and we started shooting the government with solutions like you've got to do this you've got to do this you've got to do this one as well and uh, I'm not sure that's the best policy in reality and in your IELTS essays so let's be honest here how many YouTube videos have you watched so far today just today is this the sixth seventh eighth tenth video that you watched today have you done any sports have you at least walked around how many steps did you take a hundred two hundred one thousand have you done any exercise today well you're wondering why I'm asking you these questions I actually don't want to ask these questions to receive answers from you I'm just telling you because that is exactly the topic we are going to discuss today welcome to IELTS juice let's start assessing an essay today and the rubric says well people in the current generation are not fit and active including you and me and the current generation and it will cause health problems in the future uh-uh here comes the sad news in the future we will face some serious health issues if we don't exercise and if we don't look after ourselves what could be the reasons all right this is a good question what are the reasons really what makes us stay still and not be fit suggest solutions for this issue all right uh, one important note you see both are plural so we ex the IELTS expects us to write at least two reasons and at least two solutions and the topic uh, the focus of that is the current generation so uh, you can focus on any generation any generation for you can be the current generation the generation that you are in is the easiest and the safest choice but if you have a child or if you have children you can focus on them you can you can see uh, you can write about your observation of uh, your child's school when you look at other people's children and uh, how fit or not fit they are and then uh, the, the next part is something related to the future so if we don't do anything here there will be problems in the future that is an then it's an interesting look the IELTS wants us to touch on this particular topic and look at the current generation in a way that all right they may be fine right now but in the future there might be there might be bad issues cancer heart disease obesity things like that on that note let's continue reading the response people in the current generation okay let me check something quick very fast people in the current generation people in the current generation one two three four five words there are five words exactly taken from the rubric in the response now in in such a such a scenario in when when that happens when you have more than three words consecutively one after another like you just take a block of more than three words from the rubric and you put it in your response automatically IELTS ignores it this is important maybe you haven't heard it before so this is the first time you hear it so hear it well if you take any word any sequence of words more than three words in a row from the rubric and you just take it from the rubric and paste it or put it exactly unchanged onto your response IELTS will ignore it all the five wor words will not be counted towards your wo total word count and even the words are not 
counted as valuable. So, for instance, the word current is a beautiful word, yes. But uh, it's not going to be helpful towards your scoring. It doesn't help your vocabulary. It will be ignored. Please be extra careful. Never copy words from the rubric. And if you have, there are only rare circumstances that you can copy. Make sure you don't copy more than three words consecutively. Let's continue. Suffer from fatness. It's a nice word. And in some cases, I need the comma before and and another comma before cases. Just to put it in a bracketing comma. And in some cases, obesity. And they, I need another comma here before and because the subject changes. And this is a joining comma. The, the, the previous one was a pair of bracketing commas. This one is a joining comma. Uh, I keep talking about these commas and naming them. Remember, in English, we have names for commas and we have reasons to put commas. We don't have such a thing as, I felt like having a pause here. I want to take my breath. And because of that, I put a comma. That doesn't happen in English. For every comma we put, there is a reason behind it. If you want to know uh, more information about commas, I'm going to put a lesson in the description below. Do check it out, all right? And they do not exercise regularly, which causes, I need a comma before it, which, because this one after which, it's a non-defining, it, uh, this which doesn't go back to regularly or exercise. Uh, this goes back to the whole concept that we discussed previously, which causes health problems in the future. There's a difference between in future, in meaning of in future and in the future. I'm going to put the, uh, the difference in meaning here on the screen for you to see, all right? The reasons and solutions will be discussed in the following paragraphs. Good. So the thesis statement is telling me that there are going to be first the reasons according to the also the organization of the rubric. First, the rubric wanted us to talk about the reasons and then we're going to talk about the solutions, which is after that. And they're plural. I understand. I still don't know what reasons exactly and what solutions exactly. So the thesis statement is good, but it's very generic still. I do not have a essay plan to follow. So I'm just going to start reading the first body paragraph to see what reasons there are. There are several reasons for lack of activity and not being fit. I'm all ears. One of the reasons is that people follow sedentary, a sedentary lifestyle. That's a good word. These days, they use their smart devices for long hours without any activation. Okay, activation is not equal to activity. Both are nouns but they have different meanings. I, I can understand what the writer wanted to say. The writer wanted to say act, activity. But activity is a word different from activation. Activation is used for devices or for chemical products. That's, that doesn't fit the, this context. They seat for long hours. They sit. I need a verb, not a noun. Yes, seat as a verb uh, exists, but the, the context is meaningless with, with the verb seat. They sit for long hours and usually do not spend some time with negative, it, it is with a negative sentence, it's better to say any. I know there are some cases you can use some. This is not one of those cases. Do not spend any time for working out. To illustrate this, teenagers play online games. Uh -huh. All right, to illustrate, we're actually going to talk about an example. The example is online gaming. Good. 
via smartphones, you can write it in one word or two words. Uh, I don't know which year you're watching. In this year, when you look it up, both variations, smart space phones and together smartphones, all one word, uh, are still acceptable. We don't know what happens in the future. In the future, you need to always consult a good dictionary. Please look, look up the word and see if uh, with a space in between, is it still acceptable or not? For hours, and they do not like to participate. I need a comma here. And uh, why do we say they? Because we already, it refers to teenagers. The subject doesn't change. And you can say, and do not like to participate. You don't need the comma here. You don't need all the hassle. Just, this is all fine. Delete they, because they means subject, means teacher, means teenagers. And, I mean, teenagers do not like to participate in different exercises, like group cycling. Cool. Obviously, all right, this lifestyle, oh, very good. The writer knows lifestyle is all one word. Prevents them from being fit. That's a good, I mean, the writer again knows how to write prevent and the preposition and causes overweight in long term, in the long term. Plus, using fast food has become a trend among people. All right, so in the first part, we talked about playing games, the sedentary lifestyle, and uh, they sit for long hours, spend, they spend time, a, a lot of time actually, on their phones. This was the first reason. The second reason, uh, relates to fast food. I'm not a fan of saying using fast food. Usually we eat or we consume. I understand the concept, but it's not the best fit here. Has become a trend among people. All right. It is hard for most people to resist junk food. Uh, resist doesn't need any preposition. Since it, I, I, by the way, I love the word resist. Since it is delicious. Oh, yeah. Furthermore, people do not have enough time for cooking or do not have enough time to cook. And they prefer, again, I don't need, because we're still talking about people, and prefer, I can delete this and continue, and prefer to eat something on the go. Oh, wow. Very good vocabulary, fits the context. I need a comma here because again, which doesn't uh, go to the, these words be, before it, so it goes to the whole concept. I need a comma, which is unhealthy and causes overweight. Okay, for example, employees who work full time can barely cook as they are always busy. I need to come up before so. So they prefer to eat fast food because it saves their time. And again, uh, we have the same, they prefer because it saves time and also is, I don't need it, delicious. So I feel I need to uh, say something here. I'm, I'm, maybe you watch a movie or a film and uh, they speak like this. So you always hear people say, they are, they are very fast and they are delicious. In speaking, when you speak, because you don't have time to, you know, go through all the grammatical styles and to, to come up with the best and the most effective sentence. You speak and you're, you're talking on the go. So you just join words and grammar. You want to make sure even grammar is not important. 
uh, all by itself. Grammar, when you speak, is only there to make sure that the message you convey, the message you want to give to your audience is delivered correctly. So you, you just want to talk about how good fast food is, you start talking. You don't care about uh, vocabulary and grammar as long as your messages are understood. That is speaking. That's fine. That's the nature of speaking. You can, you can go a little easy on yourself when you speak. But in writing, when you have the same subject and you are still on the, on the subject and the subject is still there, then the most efficient way is to remove the unnecessary words and cr create a more effective sentence with as few words as possible. That is one of the elements of a good writing piece. One of the elements, not all of it. And I'm just telling you this because I want you to make sure when you write, you don't write extra words. Every word you write matters. But every word you don't write also matters and shows how confident and how comfortable you are around some sentences, some advanced grammatical structures. Anyway, I'm moving on to the next body paragraph. To solve the issue, this is the solution part. Governments, we need to generalize, should formulate some policies in order to make people work out on a daily basis. So this is the topic sentence. Uh, is it correct to assume that the rest is going to be about governments? I see a government in the end. I assume the whole paragraph is going to talk about the solutions that governments can provide. So basically, there are no private sectors here. We just focus on whatever the government or, or governments around the world can do. The companies, both in public and private sectors, okay, it, it immediately contradicts my sentence. Both in public and private sectors should have some obligatory plans for regular exercise for their employees in order to keep people fit. Good. They should also be, there should also be some training about the importance of using unhealthy foods or food products or dishes in schools. All right. Now we're going back to the current generation. Teenagers should understand the consequences of using fast food constantly. This is not the natural place to put an adverb. If you do that, you need a comma before this. But the natural place would be here. Teenagers should constantly understand. So constantly should come between the modal verb, should, and the main verb, understand. People should be encouraged to use more organic food instead of conventional food by the government. All right, so I received some solutions. Um, all of them were just, just a small sentence, like uh, we need to come up with some sort of policy and there are some plans. We don't know what plans for people to stay fit. And then we focused on schools and we needed to teach school children, teenagers, uh, to be mindful of, their, of the food they consume. And there should be more organic food. There are, they, they, these solutions are not organized or categorized in a very good way. I feel like we have a paragraph and we just put the government as uh, the target, and we started shooting the government with solutions. Like, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this one as well. And uh, I'm not sure that's the best policy to move forward with. In reality, 
and in your IELTS essay. So please, uh, maybe it would have been better to just focus on two, like the education at schools and uh, incentives for employers at companies. And they both must be supervised by a specific directory in the government, basically to monitor the health of the current generation at workplace and at the educational institutions. To sum up, sedentary lifestyle and usage of junk food, which is a bit awkward, and junk food consumption instead of usage are the main reasons for not being fit in society. That's correct. We talked about it in the conclusion, in the first body paragraph. It is the government's responsibility to take some actions, some, and we already talked some, like we bombarded the poor government with all the actions that we could think of and make some plans, again, some plans for working out in offices. It's, it's like, yeah, it's not my problem, it's the government's problem. They need to come up with something, some plans, whatever. It sounds like a you problem, not a, a me problem. It's, the, it's a problem that the government have to deal with, not me. So, and then you just dump a load of issues or solutions or categories of solutions onto the government. Yeah, all right. Maybe that works. I don't know. I, I just feel it's not a very academic approach to convincing uh, uh, any particular government to do these things for us. Some plans for working out in offices. Encouraging people to use healthy meals can also be beneficial. Okay, yes. Encouraging them to eat healthy. Very nice. And uh, I like the conclusion. There are two sentences. Uh, the problem mostly lies within the body paragraphs. Personally, I really like the first body paragraph uh, more than the second body paragraph. The solutions were given in a very vague, unclear package. And we very harshly blame the government for that. Anyway, uh, from what I can see, 340 words. So let's look at the band descriptors. So we addressed all parts of the task, correct. We talked about the causes and we came up with some solutions. We already know the writer's uh, opinion. We, we know where he or she stands throughout. However, the solutions needed development. We didn't give clearer examples. We just gave three, two, three, I still cannot distinguish exactly how many solutions we were given. Definitely more than one, but they were just mentioned. I didn't have any issues with referencing. The sequencing events was quite there. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, yes, we, we received uh, the sequence of events according to what we, what we saw. So... As I mentioned in the conclusion, it is almost sequential. It's not 100%. That's why it's, not, it's, it's an eight, because you technically observed all the elements, but not 100% naturally. Uh, we, had the, we had very good control over the use of our cohesive devices. But we had overuse of the word which. I, I'm sure you also noticed. Uh, we had which many times. We had the uh, and not a lot of times, but still a little bit more overused. So for coherence and cohesion, seven seems like a logical score. For lexical score uh, or lexical resource score or for vocabulary, basically. 
I had some errors, um, vocabulary errors, but they did not impede communication. I was able to understand like active activation instead of activity. I understand uh, that we focus on the action, but it's it's just we don't know the noun, the prop the the proper noun, or we don't know the meaning of that. So that's an error. It's not natural. It sounds a little bit awkward. That's why the communication was clear, but wasn't natural and comfortable and effortless. It, I had to make some effort to understand what the words actually meant without any confusion. And vocabulary was good. I saw some complex structures, not in a wide range, but the majority of them were controlled. They didn't, we didn't have many errors. They did not confuse me, but as I said, I needed some correction in commas and punctuation marks. And I also uh, told you that this, there, are, there were elements that we could write and make it more efficient. And we basically failed to do so. All in all, 6.5 seems like a very good score. Can it get higher than this? No. This essay stays at 6.5. How can, how can this essay uh, move a step further? Well, solutions. The second body paragraph. I would have first fixed this to make sure that the solutions I give, I just, I just need to give two solutions. I don't have to bombard a, a paragraph just once, just two solutions, but with proper development is enough. On that note, I hope you enjoyed watching this assessment and you're also implementing some of the things you learned here onto your future essays, maybe letters, maybe reports, and send, us, send it for assessment. I hope I'll be assessing yours next time. Take care.